welcome to another Idea Space Craft Along with the Public Library of Brookline. My name is Christy and I'm a Reference and Technology Librarian at the Brookline Village Library. And I'm here today in our Idea Space to show you all how to make your very own plantable paper bookmarks. Let's get started. Is this your first Public Library of Brookline to go program? Here's how it works. Each month, the library is offering new take-home program kits, complete with everything you need to follow along and video or written instructions created by one of your local librarians. The best part? Absolutely no due dates. You can keep everything included in your kit. Visit brklib.com slash to go for a full list of our current kit offerings and follow the link there or visit brklib.com slash eventbrite to reserve yours for free pickup at any library location. Now let's get crafting. Today's project will take most makers about two hours of active crafting time, with about 12 hours of drying time somewhere in the middle. Here's what you'll find inside this month's kit. Two large sheets of white tissue paper, two small sheets of parchment paper, a stack of mulberry paper scraps, two pre-cut paper bookmarks, a packet of wildflower seeds, a bobbin of baker's twine, three small jars containing cornstarch, corn syrup, and white vinegar, a disposable measuring cup and popsicle stick mixer, and a paintbrush. From home, you'll also need a stovetop and a small saucepan, as well as some tablespoon and teaspoon measures. Take a moment to gather your materials, and then we'll get started. Since we're making bookmarks you can plant, we want to be sure that all the components we will use will be broken down easily in soil, so we're going to start by making our own compostable glue. Start by pouring three quarters of a cup of tap water into your saucepan. That's six ounces if you're using the plastic measuring cup in your kit. Stir in two tablespoons of corn syrup and one teaspoon of vinegar, then turn the stove top to high. While the saucepan comes to a boil, fill your measuring cup with another six ounces or three quarters of a cup of cold tap water and stir in two tablespoons of cornstarch with your popsicle stick mixer until the consistency is smooth. When your saucepan is fully boiling, pour your cornstarch mixture in a little at a time, stirring as you go. When it's all combined, wait for the mixture to return to a boil and then let it boil for one minute. Remove your glue from the heat and allow it to cool before using it. You can also transfer it to an airtight container for easier storage. Once your glue is cool enough to work with, we can start making our paper. Lay out both sheets of parchment paper on your table. You'll want your mulberry and tissue papers handy, as well as your paintbrush. You might also want a pair of scissors from home. Cut or tear your tissue paper into rectangles a bit smaller than your parchment paper. Place one sheet of tissue on your parchment paper, then paint a coat of cornstarch glue over the sheet. It's completely fine if the paper wrinkles up a bit. Once your tissue paper is evenly coated, choose some mulberry papers you like and tear or cut them into small pieces, then stick them to your tissue paper. You can do this at random or make a pattern. It's completely up to you. When you're happy with the amount of color on this layer, dab a bit of glue on the pieces you've added, then add another layer of tissue on top. Add more glue and repeat. The tissue paper will dry translucent up to three or four layers deep, so experiment with the way you layer your colors together. If you'd like to be able to plant the paper you're making, choose a layer or two to sprinkle some seeds into. A little goes a long way once it's planted. Then just add some more glue and repeat. You have enough parchment paper to make two sheets of seed paper at a time, but you probably have more tissue and mulberry than that, so feel free to grab some more parchment or wax paper from home if you'd like to make more at once. You can also recycle other scraps of paper from around your house by adding them into your project. You can use any kind of paper, but we chose mulberry paper for this project because it's thin and porous, which lets it soak up the glue particularly well. Whenever you're happy with your paper, you can finish it with a final layer of tissue and glue before leaving it to dry overnight. Be sure to rinse out your paintbrush and cover your glue if you'd like to use them again later. See you again tomorrow for step three. Once your paper is completely dry, you can peel the parchment paper off the back, then grab your pre-cut bookmarks, cornstarch glue, paintbrush, and a pair of scissors from home. You can cut your paper into a single sheet that fits your bookmark or into shapes or letters to decorate with and attach them with your cornstarch glue. 
You can even use your bookmark as a template and cut another whole bookmark made entirely out of seed paper. Once your bookmarks are decorated, you can add a simple tassel to the tops using the twine in your kit. I used a lark's head knot on the bookmarks in this video. If you'd like to do that too, unravel your bobbin and cut the twine into four equal pieces. Then fold two of the pieces in half and feed the open ends through the hole in the top of your bookmark and the loop formed by the fold until it catches in a knot. When you're done reading and want to plant your bookmark, just remove the twine and put the bookmark under a bit of soil before adding sunshine and water. Thank you all so much for crafting with us today. We would love to see what you made with your kit, so please feel free to share your project with us on social media using the hashtag MakeYourOwnStory. The Craft Along program is generously sponsored by the library trustees and the friends of the Brookline Public Library. From all of us here at the library, we miss you and wish you very happy making. Bye-bye.